Paul wrote to the Ephesians and he said, let me tell you about myself as an apostle. There's two things I want to do in life. There's two things God's called me to do. He's called me to show the unsearchable riches of Christ to all of you and to everyone afar off. And he spent his life doing that with great zeal. He went, he went to the Gentiles and, and to people in far off lands. And he, he risked his life again and again and again. Endured floggings and stonings and fastings and many things. In order that he might show the unsearchable riches of Christ to men of every tongue and tribe that he could reach in his lifetime. He said, the second thing that I've come to do is to show the administration of the unsearchable riches of Christ to God's people. He said, God showed me a picture of what it would look like if you really worked the unsearchable riches of Christ into your own lives. As a corporate entity, as the body of Christ connected to the head, here's what it would look like if Christ was on earth again in the form of his body. And Jesus prophesied that would, would happen in John 14, that the world wouldn't see him, but we would, and that he would be manifest in his people as the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost came to live in his people, that the world would then be able to see Christ expressed. He said, I, I have to leave. I love to be here, and I'm going to love coming back to, to make the earth my footstool. But in the meantime, he said, it's better for you that I leave because the Holy Spirit is going to fill you and you'll express my life to the nations as a people. So that's essential. And Paul was so eaten up by, in a positive sense, a consuming zeal and fire in his heart to see that worked out. The administration of the unsearchable riches of Christ, the working out of that, that just consumed his lifetime. The whole New Testament, these are not letters to unbelievers. I mean, certainly unbelievers can benefit from them. And as we read the scriptures to unbelievers, they certainly benefit from them and can be led to Christ. It can be made wise unto salvation through the scriptures. That's certainly true, but these were letters that were written to believers. Paul spent vast amounts of energy in writing to believers and perfecting them and drawing them up into the wisdom and the counsel of God that they could express Jesus of Nazareth in their lives corporately, not just individuals, but together. And, and in fact, Paul went so far as to say, this is a very common expression in our world, but he went so far as to say that the meaning of being baptized by the Holy Spirit in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 is that we're baptized into one body and become members of one another. Now, the situation that you're in, in the church that you're in, and, and wherever you may be at, in whatever uh, country or, or habitation you may have and call home right now, you need to be very, very careful that you don't accept something that God doesn't accept out of laziness, out of ignorance of the Word of God, out of lack of vision, out of sin in your own personal life that has, has so blinded you or maimed you that you feel inadequate. Um, maybe you've been sold the fact that you're just laity and so you have really nothing to offer and your opinion doesn't matter because there's, there's some, so many wise and learned men out there that what could you know? Um, I just want to encourage you, whoever you are, if you've really called on the name of the Lord, if you've really asked Him to take control of your life and asked Him to wash away your sins, His desire is from the least to the greatest that every man would know Him and live in His counsel and fellowship with Him, fellowship with the Godhead on a daily basis. And therefore, you have something to offer, and you shouldn't say because you're a foot, oh, I'm not an eye, and so I have nothing to offer. There really is something you can offer. There's a world around you, and every once in a, in a great, great long while, a man comes along or a people come along that are willing to question the universe that they live in and make a difference there. And that's what Hebrews 11 is about, and that's what God's called each of us to be. If we have the, the courage and the willingness and we're in communion with the head, abiding in Him, there will be much fruit to show for it. And, and you can be a person that makes a difference in the world that you're in. Now, we, we've got a bunch of questions here that a, a man that um, is, uh, was an elder of a mega church in, in a city in the southeast. Uh, he basically has, as we were laughing about earlier um, affectionately, the gift of asking questions. And... Um, He's written down a bunch of questions that, that, that he asked in his first initial relationship with us. We've become very, very good friends over time. And um, these are questions that he's written down since he asked them from the gut and from the heart early on. And uh, 
It's not Kevin Murphy. Right? No, no, it's not Kevin Murphy. It's uh, a man in in, uh, no, in the southeast. Anyway, he's asked a bunch of questions, and we get letters constantly from other cities and in other countries that ask a lot of the similar questions. So we wanted to put down uh, in some form that could be grasped some answers to some of these questions and, and we may not go into a tremendous amount of detail but they're fair and they're good questions. You have to start with having a vision though. Without vision the people cast off restraint. The rest of this video is going to mean nothing. If you don't have a consuming zeal for the Father's house, it's, it's your gut, it's your heart. You want it so bad that you're willing to, to risk your life for it or you, you know the pain is so great as you look around and you see things that are not reflective of the character of Jesus of Nazareth. You don't see a corporate entity where the hand doesn't say to the eye, I have no need of you. If you don't see the body of Christ functioning the way God called it to, the way you read about it in the book of Acts and in the epistles, um, if you don't see that but it doesn't matter to you, then the rest of this tape is just meaningless. And, and in fact, it'll just be fuel for the fire. It, it really won't, won't help anything at all. Um,